Artificial intelligence has taken the world by storm, and with so many text-to-image generators out there, it is hard to decide which one to use. But one of the most popular ones out there is Midjourney for a lot of reasons, and I'm sure if you've looked into this at all, you've heard the name. Midjourney is one of the most realistic text-to-image generators out there, and that's why it's made a name for being so great. So in this video, we're gonna walk through all of the basics on how to get started with Midjourney, set up an account, the basics of using it, and all of that to get you started on your way of creating amazing, beautiful AI generators art. So first of all, to get started with Midjourney, you'll need a Discord account. If you have one already, just log in. If not, go to discord.com and you can create an account there. Totally free. So just go up to log in and then click register and just create your account here. Then once you have your email and username set up in here, just go ahead and continue through the steps to finish setting up your Discord account. So now once you're all set up with a Discord account, make sure you're logged in and then go to the Midjourney webpage. It's just midjourney.com. And from there, we're going to scroll down to where it says join the beta and we'll click join the beta here and it's going to launch a new tab in Discord for you. And then all you need to do is hit join mid journey right here in the middle. So now you can see we're in the mid journey Discord page and there's a lot of tabs over here on the side. And this can be a little confusing and hectic at the start. And trust me, I was a little confused at the start as well when I jumped in here because there's a lot going on. A lot of people use mid journey, but the things you wanna know is there's all the information over here on the side. Um, you can get the rules over here if you click this and the getting started information is really important. So this gives you all the basics of creating an image. And and essentially what we want to do is we just want to go to one of these newcomer rooms. So as a free user, there's a lot of limitations on what you can do. Sometimes you can create images, but it's kind of just dependent on server load. But what you can do is you can check out what everyone else is doing. So if you go over to one of these newcomer rooms, you can just click on, we'll go to newbies 103, and you can see the art that people are generating. Uh, this goes really fast. Again, there's a lot of people using it, but we can see some of the stuff other people are making. Midjourney can create some really powerful stuff and really, really good looking things as well, especially as you learn to use it and get more advanced with it. The it's honestly endless in the amount of art you can create. Now to start typing things in the Discord channel, you do have to make sure you have a verified account. So if you haven't verified your information yet already, make sure you do that. And I'm gonna do that real quick. So all you have to do to subscribe to Midjourney, if you wanted to subscribe to one of their paid plans, is type in slash subscribe on your keyboard. You have to spell it correctly, and it'll take you to a subscription page, hit return, and it's gonna give you your own uh, subscription link you can use. So we'll open that up. And now you can see the subscription plans. So they offer a basic plan, a standard plan, and a pro plan. The gist is how much stuff you're allowed to generate with them. So you can see the basic plan is limited to just 200 generations a month. The standard plan gives you 15 hours of fast generations, and the pro plan gives you 30 hours of fast generations. Um, they all come with their own different perks, but you can see whatever plan works for you and try it out for yourself. It's pretty seamless once you're set up with a subscription plan, you can start using it right away. And there's a couple places you can start making images. You have access to the rooms themselves, which are kind of hectic, like I mentioned earlier, but it could be kind of a cool place to hang out and start getting inspiration for things. And it's just kind of fun to see what other people are making. I honestly just like sit in here and see some of the cool stuff, see some Keanu Reeves here, it's fun. Or you can use the actual private mid journey chat and you can start generating stuff yourself there as well. So creating images is actually pretty easy. All you have to do is type in slash and imagine. And if you look over here on the side, it reminds you that as well. You can even just click this and it'll give it to you. And then you just type in what you want. Now you can be as vague or as specific as you want, but the more specific you are, it's generally gonna have a better chance of success to make what you want. So let's just do an example here and we'll do a hyper-realistic image of a dog in the bed of a truck. We'll hit enter and it'll start generating the image for us. It usually takes about less than a minute or so to generate an image. And now we just kind of wait and hang out for it to do it. So now you can see the images that it created and here's our hyper-realistic dog in the back of a truck. And it's, it's very impressive. It always blows me away with how good it is. Now you'll see a series of buttons underneath the image once it's generated. So the first four you have are for upscaling options. So if you want to upscale the second image, you can use U2, that'll upscale the second image, U3 for third, and so on and so forth. So then on the right here is the regenerate button. And what this does is this will generate a new set of four images for you. This is excellent if it's close, but it's not exactly what you're looking for. You can use this to just make a new set of images with the same prompt. So let's go ahead and do that just to try it out. We'll click the regenerate button and we'll see what it pops up for. Well, it'll see the same pop prompt. We'll just submit it and that'll regenerate a new set of four images for us. So now you can see that it took our same prompt, a hyper-realistic image of a dog in the bed of a truck, but it gave us four new images to work with. Now the second row of buttons down here are for variations. So if you like one of these, but you want some variations of it, you can do variation. And this is for the same things as the upscaling. So image one, two, three, and four. So let's say I really like the first image. It's pretty close, but we want some variations. We can hit V1 and it's gonna generate some variations for us for that first image there. And so now you can see that it's got the similar feel to the first image, but a few just different variations. You can see that like the pose changed a little bit, uh, where he's sitting is, 
This one has like the cloth fabric over his leg, different collars. So it's really cool. And this is how you can kind of narrow down and specify exactly what you want to really nail down the exact look of what you're looking for and the image that you're creating. Now, there are a lot of other commands you can use. I'm not gonna go over through every single one, but there is a blog post linked in the description of this video down below. You can go there. It'll have all of the different basic commands that you can use and some advanced commands from Midjourney. There are a whole lot of them, and I don't wanna bore you by running through a, just a list of commands. So check those out for yourself if you wanna get all the other ones. So again, there are a lot of different prompts you can use. I'm not gonna go over all of those, but here's some tips for you to kind of help you get on your way with creating amazing AI generated art with Midjourney. The biggest number one tip that I have for you is to be very concise with what you want. For instance, let's look at the difference between just doing a photorealistic cat. We'll have it generate that for us. So here you can see our photorealistic cat, but if we want to make this more specific to what we want, we could do a photorealistic cat with long white fur and blue eyes. So let's have it generate that for us. And you can see the difference of just being very specific and concise with what you want it to create. So now you can see our cat with long white fur and blue eyes and it's created it and it looks fantastic. Another cool thing that you can use is styles and mediums for your pictures. So we'll use the same prompt. It'll be a photorealistic cat again, same with the long white fur and blue eyes. But what we'll do is we'll make this in the style of Leonardo da Vinci and we'll see what it creates for that. And here's what it came up with some pretty sweet hair and a cool necklace on this one. So there you have kind of the basics of using Mid Journey. I know it's gonna sound cliche, but really the only limitations that you have are your imagination when it comes to creating art with Mid Journey. It is a fantastic, powerful tool, and it is just a lot of fun, especially just hanging out in the newcomer areas, watching what other people are doing. It's a great way to get inspiration for your own projects, and it's just a lot of fun. Now, again, for some more advanced concepts and all of the commands you can use within Mid Journey, go down into the link below in our video description. There's a blog article down there you can check out that goes more into depth on Midjourney. We just covered the very core basics in this video to get you started. Thank you so much for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it. Before you go though, make sure you check out some of our other content. Like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got a lot more content coming out, especially a lot of cool AI focused content. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. And we'll see you in the next video.